Tonight, a CBS special movie presentation, the television premiere of To Find My Son. Richard Thomas stars as a single man who meets an orphan desperately in need of a father. Together, their relationship grows. You adopt me? His struggle against a rigid bureaucracy is a drama of love and compassion. We have a policy against single parent adoptions. Nobody can give him more love than I can give him. Inspired by a true story, the television premiere of To Find My Son, a CBS special movie presentation, next. The book, To Find My Son, was first published in 1979. The movie you are about to see was shot and aired for the first time of five times on CBS television in 1980. And following the CBS showings, the movie has been presented several times on HBO, Cinemax, the Movie Channel, Showtime, Lifetime, the Disney Channel, and Encore True Stories. The story is true. In 1972, I became the first single man in the state of Texas, if not the nation, to adopt a child. Now, for several reasons, the protection of the good people at child welfare and the probation department who were behind me. The names, the dates, and locations in this film have been changed. The title, To Find My Son, came to me one evening uh, while documenting the story. As a volunteer at the Burden Balin Home for Dependent and Neglected Children, never, never did the notion or idea ever cross my mind that there among those children, I was to find my son. You'll probably think I'm a total idiot, or else just completely irresponsible. This was a big move for me, coming to Chicago, one of the top TV stations in the country, better money, bigger responsibility. I really thought I wanted it. but. It's just too much for me, Mr. Peck. I'm sorry. The pace of the city, the people, the, the station. I honestly don't know what I'm looking for, but now that I've lived here and I've worked here and I've walked your streets and breathed your air, I know that this isn't it. So I'm afraid I'm just going to have to turn in my resignation. Mr. Benjamin, you only worked here one week. <laughs> Surprised? Such a funny thing, you know. I've lived in this town less than a year. When I was back up there in Chicago, hating every minute of it, I didn't know where else to go. I've spent my whole life in the Midwest, and now that seems as foreign to me as Siberia. So here I am. Got my job back, though. 
I gave everybody at work a chance to say I told you so. I went through the whole staff. I don't think I left anybody out. Well, how about you? Now's your chance. No? They gave me the graveyard shift. They thought it was a punishment. I think it's great. I'll have my days free. I, uh, see you've moved up in the world. Whole room for your trains? Hmm. Ooh, this is new. Well, it's all rented. You forgot the bed. Oh, no, no, I'm gonna make a bed. I found a great design in a magazine. It's got everything. It's got a headboard, a nightstand. It works. So how's school? Well, it hasn't changed much in a week. No. Well, are you happy I'm back? Are you? No. Just curious. I keep driving past the place. I wondered what the heck it was. It's an orphanage. Yeah. Well, it looked sort of like a camp coming up the drive. And I spent a lot of time in summer camps in Michigan as a counselor. But I don't suppose you have much need for a camp counselor in an orphanage, do you? Oh, yes, we do. Say, Mr. Garcia, <laughs> this young man is interested in volunteering to work with the children. Terrific. What's your name? David Benjamin is my name. Manuel Garcia. Call me Manny. I don't... Walk with me. What do you do? I'm associate director at KXIW TV. Really, that sounds like an interesting job. Any free time? Well, I work nights. You any experience with kids? As a camp counselor. Yeah. That helps. Do you always walk this fast? Can you swim? Yeah, of course I can swim. Oh, that's terrific. Uh, Sorry, oh, wait, kids. wait a minute. I, uh... Frank's sick. <laughs> But I think we got lucky. Uh, uh, I'd like you to meet Coach Dave. He's going to lifeguard for us today. Uh, yeah! No, wait. I wasn't, I wasn't really planning on starting today. I got a lot it's of things. It's only two I hours. Do. No, I, I don't have any trunks or You don't anything. need one. These kids swim like fish. Well, thanks, Dave. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll see you later. Terrific. Hey, can you swim? Oh, no. Don't do it again, okay? Just no more tricks, all right, Tommy? Go on, go on, it's all right, go on. Swim away. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Are there any problems we should discuss, Mrs. Banks? You'll get a copy of my report. Good day.
Why do I always get the feeling she's on her way to report to Hitler? Well, what does she want? Inhale? <laughs> I told you it'd be easy. Sorry I had to rush off like that. It's okay. That was the big cheese with child welfare, and they paid the bills. Did you fill out an application card? Uh, no, I didn't. It's okay. It's okay. You can do it tomorrow. Well, how do I? I may not be here tomorrow. I thought you worked nights. I do. Well, uh, school will be out soon for the summer, so we need all the help we can get. Let me ask kids. you something. See that that little kid over there, Tommy? Why is he here? He's waiting to be adopted. How old is he? Seven. He's seven years old, and he doesn't know how to talk. Well, if he was perfect, he probably wouldn't be here. Yeah. I didn't notice any of the other kids were handicapped. What do you call being an orphan? How about it, tomorrow? I don't know. One hour. I'm building a bed. <laughs> okay. Uh, next time, bring a bathing suit, huh? <laughs> All right. I, hey, Manny, tell me something. How many volunteers do you actually have? One. One plus me? One is you. I thought so. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> You're welcome. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't spit the seeds in the pool. There you go. You're welcome. Hey! Me too, Dave. He's what? He says he's Coach Dave. No, you don't look like that. I don't look like that. What? He's asking if you play baseball. Yeah, sure, I play baseball. Me too. Good. <laughs> How do you understand what he says? He's my brother. How many sisters does he have? Three. Me and Linda and Carol. And one brother, Andrew. Huh? What's your name? Teresa. Are you all here? Yes. How long have you been here? Three years. Oh, boy. Here you go. Cheeseburger with ketchup and coffee. Oh, great. I'm heading home to bed. What do I owe you? Oh, even. I owed you, remember? That's right. How about heading down to the lake on Saturday? I think I can get my hands on a sailboat. Uh, no, I'm going to see Julie on Saturday. I'll bring her along. Maybe next weekend, OK? Oh, fine. Look, I'm going to go. I'll see you tomorrow. OK, thanks, Bobby. OK. Uh, uh, Bobby? Yeah. Bobby, what's the early bird show tomorrow? Uh, let's see. A shoot 'em up a Western. I need a favor from you.
Me. Bed. My. My bed. No. Me bed. No you. No, I know it's not my bed, it's your bed, but you say my bed. No. Me. Bed. Well, it's a nice room. You like that cap, eh? Okay, it's yours. It's yours, you keep it. He doesn't understand you. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. I'm Mrs. Ryan, the house mother. Hello, I'm, I'm David Benjamin. I'm sort of a volunteer here. I know. Coach Dave. I hear about you through three meals a day. Your <laughs> ears must be burning. Oh. Do you really think that he doesn't understand what I say? Oh, he understands the words, but I don't know if he understands the concept. Uh, the kids here don't have any clothes of their own. On laundry day, everything goes to the main laundry and gets redistributed. Oh. So, uh, this cap may end up on somebody else's head next week. Well, what, what about toys? I don't, I don't notice any toys. Oh, they can have toys of their own. The problem is the other children have a tendency to steal them. I see. Great guy, you're gonna love him. Sure hope so. I thought we were gonna spend the day together just doing me. Here he comes. <laughs> Very funny. Tommy, this is my friend Julie. Julie, this is Tommy. Hi. Hi. Up in the back, kiddo. Well, where do you want to go today? Apple. What? Apple. He has a little difficulty. Say it slowly. Too fast, you're gonna get yourself a stomach ache. Eat all you want. You can eat all you I'm want. Take you just don't eat Okay. Well. Good move. Sorry. <laughs> just keep an eye on him, you'll get all your table manners down. Me tea. Drink. Tea. Drink. Me tea tea. How about cup? Can you say cup? Cup. Cup. Huh. If we're going to be lazy, we're not going to get anywhere. Table. Taya. No, table. No, taya. Table. Table. That's better. You know, I think he uh, has no trouble with the way he talks. He certainly can understand himself. Well, that's cute when you're two, but not when you're seven. I don't think it's because he's slow. He's incredibly bright and alert. You should see him out there with the other kids. He's a regular clown. He just loves the attention. Thing is, he's so darn likable, half the time all he has to do is point at something and gets what he wants. I just think it's because nobody's ever bothered to trouble themselves about his problem. You mean you think he doesn't talk because he doesn't have to? I don't know. I just think it's worth some energy to find out. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Before you can teach anybody anything, you've got to get their attention first. Please, more. You want more? More. What do you want, bread? OK, say it. Bread. Bread. No, bread. Please. Me, me, what feed? You say it and you can have it. Bread. Brr. Say brr. Brr. 
Ed. Ed. Duh. Please. Duh. 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 Okay. Bread. Duh. P please. Bread. Duh. Say it. Bread. Duh. Bread. Bread. Close enough. You know what I wish? What? I wish you'd buy a bed. Come on, I told you, I'm building a bed. Yeah, yeah, the lumber's been here for three weeks. Oh, hello. Remember me? Julie? The girl you just made love with? Thinking about Tommy? It was a good day, I think. At least I know that he can say the words properly if he wants to. And that's a start. Don't you think so? Mm-hmm. You know what kills me? Mm. His room. It's got nothing personal in it. it. Doesn't have any toys. No baseball cards. Uh, rabbit's foot, a can of worms. That was me. I was a mess. That's the way I grew up. Oh, it's just all so neat. Completely anonymous. talk when you want to. <laughs> These are called flashcards. Here, see there's a picture on one side, and then on the other side is a word that tells you what it is. It's a hen, donkey. Here, what's this? No, this is a boy. You're a boy, of course, but uh, not all boys are you. But this is a boy. And on the back, it has the word, boy. B-O-Y. B-O-I. Why? Why? Why not? I'm gonna make it tough, huh? Ba-oy. Ba boy. You don't make your P sounds very well. You don't learn how to do that. Why don't you take a piece of tissue like this and go. See how the air blows it out? There you try it. Grab it there. No. That's the right idea, but you gotta hold it at the top there. Just hold it at the top and blow the bottom of the bottom of the tissue. That's right. But make the sound. Puff when you do it. Puff. Okay, say, like this, jump. Jump. That's right. Okay, um, jump. Jump. Again, that's right, good, good. You hear that P sound?
hat, go lose it. We're having a picnic. This is a trestle. We're going over the trestle. See? Be careful. Depot. Can you say that? Can you say depot? Remember, it's got that P sound in it. Depot. Okay, kiddo, it's time to go. Tommy, come on, let's go. Tommy? 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 What's the matter, did I scare you? No, me happy. Dave, I got 120 kids here. They're here a month, six months. They go to foster homes. Some come back. Some get adopted. New kids come the in. The boy's got a hearing problem. Somebody should have picked that up. I've got one nurse, nine to five. Wait, wait no regular doctor. Wait a minute. What about the house mother? What about you? You've been with the kid almost every day for months. What took you so long to pick it up? I'm not trying to lay a, a load of guilt on you, Dave, but don't lay it on me. I'm giving you reality. This place is a bloody mess. Mm. Up until last year, the probation department, that's me, had total responsibility for this place. Our mandate came from the courts. We weren't an adoption center. We were what they call a home for dependent and neglected children. Now child welfare has taken over and changed all that. They come in here with their caseworkers who, who don't report to me. They report to the downtown office, so all of a sudden, Communications get messed up and I get an ulcer. Well, what do the kids get, Manny? The best I can give them. Come in. Hello, doctor. The boy does have a mild hearing impairment. I think it's a middle ear problem. His adenoids and tonsils are huge, so there's probably an excess of fluid due to obstruction. I'll make arrangements to remove his tonsils and adenoids as soon as a hospital bed's available. Will his hearing improve after the operation? Well, I hope so. Well, it's hard to know till a couple months after surgery. Well, doctor, do you think could his uh, speech problem be related to his hearing? Well, that I don't know. Uh, I only spent 15 minutes with the boy. I hardly had a chance to check past his ears. Well, I have another appointment. Uh, I'll have my nurse call you about the surgery. Thank you, doctor. Oh, take care. You think you could find a doctor who'd give him more than 15 minutes of his time? Who's his caseworker? Connie Marks. Wait a minute. Is it Connie? Connie Marks. Marks. Marks? Mrs. Oh, oh, Hi. Sorry. sorry that I'm late. Oh. Uh, so, you're Coach Dave. Right. All I hear about from Tommy these days is his Coach Dave. 
You're really quite a heroic figure, you know. I thought you'd be taller, <laughs> bigger, and older. Well, if you were seven years old and four feet tall, I would be. <laughs> Good afternoon. Would you like a cocktail? Uh, uh, no. Thank you. I'm not really... I'm not much of a drinker, so... Well, anyway, I'm glad to meet you. You've been good for Tommy. I don't see him that often, so I get a chance to be surprised every time at the improvement in his speech. Well, that's great. That helps a lot, because it's kind of what I want to talk to you about. I also think he's, he's improving every day. And I spend as much time with him as I can, or, of course, as much time as the home will allow. But I feel that if I could spend more time with him, he'd improve even faster. So I began wondering if maybe it would be possible for me to become his foster parent. And I know I'm single, but I'm really very, very self-sufficient. I've got an extra room in my apartment. I have loads of time to work with him. And, you know, you people could come around and check up on us whenever you wanted to, because I know it would be temporary. And naturally, if a more suitable home came along, then, then he would have to go there. But that's in the future. And the point is, I could be helping him right now. Did you know he was in a foster home and um, didn't work out? Yes. What are your feelings toward Tommy? Well, he's a great kid. He's, he's uh, charming and bright. Well, that's what you think about him. How do you feel about him? I like him. <laughs> I like him a lot. Considering the existing regulations in this state, I, I think you would have a very difficult time becoming a foster parent. Would you consider adopting him? Hi, you ready to order? Oh, no. No, we need another one. I'm serious. I, uh, I think you might have an easier time adopting him than taking him as a foster child. I don't understand. Well, Tommy is what's known in my work as a hard-to-place child. He's already seven years old, and his, his speech impediment um, turns prospective parents off. Adopting a handicapped child takes a very special personality. It just doesn't seem to make any sense. If they wouldn't let me become a foster parent, why would they let me become a real parent? Well, I don't know that they will let you be a real parent. But becoming a foster parent involves a whole new set of regulations. Um, first of all, the state pays foster parents. And believe me, when the government puts out money, just red tape you to death. I, I just never considered the, the possibility of becoming somebody's real father. You know, we've never had a single parent adoption in this county. Maybe the time and the circumstances are right. Look, what about my age? I'm 23 years old. I was 18 when I got married and 21 when I had my baby. You are serious about this, aren't you? Well, the point is, are you? Oh, God, I don't know. I mean, I, I hadn't even considered it. It never, never entered my mind. It's, uh, it's an incredible idea. Uh, I'd like to think about it I, a lot. What do you think about it? Well, if it's, if it's something you want, it, it would be the best thing for Tommy. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, if I decided to go ahead with it, would you support me? Yes, I would. <laughs> Have you talked to your parents? Not yet. Have you talked to anyone? Only you. Are you really doing this for Tommy? I thought that's what this whole thing was about. Well, yeah, I hope so. 
Look, it's not like collecting trains or having a hobby, you know? Oh, come on, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. It's... I know you really care about Tommy. It's just I think that you have to decide whether you're doing this for you or, well, for him. Well, if I do it, it'll be for both of us. I got a lot of work to do. See ya. But see, you're a lucky guy. I mean, you got a nice job, you make a nice buck, you got a nice place, no debts. I owe everybody in town. You own your own car. You got a girl who's crazy about you. Why would you want to rock the boat? Dr. Reagan to ICU. Dr. Fine. Reagan to ICU. Am I glad you're here? Is he all right? Oh, he's fine, but there's an intern and two nurses that aren't. Well, he didn't want to have his examination until you got here. Oh, no. And they tried to argue him out of it, and uh, they won. But. He got in a couple of pretty good shots, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, I've got to get back to the other kid. When is the surgery? The seven in the morning. Oh, will you be here? Oh, I've got 11 kids for breakfast. Oh. I've got to run now. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Dr. Rogers to OR. Dr. Rogers to OR. Tommy. You take me? Hey, you're gonna be fine. You take me. Okay, all right, I'm staying, I'm staying. Tommy? adoption supervisor, David Benjamin. Hi. Hello. Sit down. Thank you. So, you want to be a father? I want to be Tommy's father. Why? Because I love her. Well, have you made out the application form? Well, I had a, a little bit of difficulty. Because everything on it is for two parents. So instead, I decided to just write down my feelings. And that way, I wouldn't be just another statistic. Oh, obviously, you got a lot of feelings. Well, do you know Tommy? Well, uh, 
I suspect I'll know him better after I read this. Fantastic boy. You know, he's lovable and bright, and he's just, he's a great kid. Well, let us read this material, and then we'll get back to you. Well, if it's all right, then what happens? Well, then we make up a preliminary workup. A caseworker from the downtown office will contact you, probably Helen Shannon, and she'll come out to your house, interview you, and make up a report. And then all of that gets sent down to the office downtown. Mr. Benjamin, uh, these things take time. They do take time. So you just have to prepare yourself to do a lot of waiting. May I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Do you think that I should tell Tommy? No, no. I think we should wait until we see if this thing is really going to happen. Is it really going to happen? I think it would be very, very good for him. It probably will be good for him. But there's another important question. Will he be good for you? Because if he isn't, this adoption will be a disaster. Well, he's already good for me. Look, I'll read this. Okay. Well, thank you mm -hmm. very much. Thanks. I'll talk to you. Okay. Thanks again. It's not the weekend. Me go you now. It's not the weekend, and your supper's getting cold. Come on, Tommy. See you tomorrow. Did you buy this for Tommy? Oh, no, no, Mrs. Shannon. These are mine. I, I'm, oh. I'm a collector. But this would be his bedroom. It's a good size, don't you think? I think so. Yes. And uh, the bathroom is right across the hall. Um, now, my bedroom is right, right, right here, if you'd like to see oh, it. Oh, yes. As you can see, I'm building my own bed. Uh, this is instant. I hope you don't mind. No, that's fine. Okay. Do you cook, Mr. Benjamin? I'm not a great cook. But I'm going to take some courses. I figure in a couple of months I should be adequate. Maybe even good. You know, I really believe you will be. Okay, we'll walk. No, I've really got a lot of work. Would you mind telling me what's going on? Nothing's changed for me. Uh, classes, studies. You're the one who's going through all the changes. It's not what I'm talking about. You've been avoiding me. Have you decided to adopt yet? Yeah, I filled out the applications and everything. You're really serious? Well, sure I'm serious. You seem to have a problem with that. Goodbye, Dave. 
I don't understand your attitude. Why do you feel this way Look, about forget it? it. It's my problem. I mean, it's my problem. It's your problem. It's our problem if you won't talk to me about it. I would really like for you to get out of my way. Well, I would really like for you to just stay here and tell me about it. Look, it's got nothing to do with Tommy, and it's got nothing to do with you. I'm just stupid, that's all. I was seeing things the way I wanted to see them, and now I've smartened up, okay? I don't know what that means. Look, all you ever wanted to be was my friend, and that's fine, except that I wanted more. It hurt me a lot when you went to Chicago. I thought I was never going to see you again. And then suddenly you came back and you said you were staying, and I felt great. I felt really positive. And along comes this little boy, and I thought, wow, you're really settling down. And here's this person that we can share. Except that you only talk about Tommy and you. You never talk about Tommy and us. Famous Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Hi. This is Bobby. Can you say Bobby? Bobby. Hey, that's great. How are you gonna like having this character for a father? We gotta go do some clothes shopping. Okay, see you later. See you, Tommy. Don't worry, we'll be back. Come on. Go on, out you go. So what do you think? You like these clothes? All right, we'll take them. No take. Go to laundry. <laughs> oh, no. These are not going to the laundry. These are staying at my house, because these are your clothes, and nobody else can wear them. Besides, you're going to need good clothes. We're going on vacation. Where we'll go? Buchanan, Michigan. That's where my mom and dad live. I asked Mrs. Grady if I could take you there for Christmas holiday, and she said that would be just fine. Do you like that? Good, we'll have a great time. Okay, we gotta get you a jacket. You adopt me? I'm trying. I hope those are happy tears. You're a good eater, huh? I like good eaters. Sleep right in this bed. Okay, keep the covers up now. Don't get cold. Good night. They're all tucked in. Isn't he great? He uh, seems small for his age. Well, so was I. He's a handsome boy. Yeah. Handsome, small, what difference? What are you doing? 
Mom, I told you what I'm doing. You can't be serious. I'm serious. You're a single boy. How can you take on a responsibility like this? You don't even know yet what, you, what you're doing with your own life. You want to take the responsibility for a baby? Oh, wait a minute. I do know what I'm doing with my life. For the first time, I know. Then you know you're ruining it. You should get married. You should have a home. You should have children with your wife. What kind of girl would even want to marry you if you had a son? And, and, and this boy, he can hardly talk. He talks better than he did six months ago. I did that. Fine. Teachers don't adopt their students. He's not my student. No? Then what? Another grand commitment you can walk away from in a week? Oh, stop it. Can we talk you out of this? Then what do you want from us? Our blessings? Well, your understanding would help. Dan, I feel about this boy the way I think you feel about me. I know I've disappointed you my whole life. I just, not knowing what I want. Mostly I've known what I didn't want. I didn't want to be a scholar like Ruthie or Matt. I didn't want to be a doctor or a lawyer. I know you didn't want me to get into television. But once I was there, I felt that you wanted me to be the best director I could possibly be, and I didn't even really want that. This trip to Chicago was a, it was a big step up for me in the business, but I hated it. I love you both, but I just can't live my life off your fantasies. I'm sorry if I'm disappointing you again with Tommy. But he's given me a sense of importance I've never had in my whole life. And as much as he needs me, I need him. He's going to be my family. I just hope that he can be a part of our family. Okay, kiddo, vacation's over. Mrs. Ryan's gonna be awful happy to see you. Wait till you. You can't, Tommy, not yet. Soon, though. Be just you and me. When? Soon. Come on, you gotta go in. I promise, Mrs. Grady. I'll be back to see you tomorrow. Come on now. Thank you, Cap. What about the laundry? Let me hide. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Go on. Any news for me? Oh. The downtown office phoned. They want the adoption proceedings terminated. What? I'm sorry. If ever the conditions were perfect for a single parent adoption, they are in your case. It's the downtown office. They just refuse to budge. Talk to him. I did. So did Mrs. Grady. Well, who's, who, who's doing it? Is it Shannon? No. It's higher than Shannon. She turned in a great report on you. This is crazy. I know. I'm very sorry. I don't care if you're sorry. I don't give up. I don't care about your perfect conditions, either. I didn't take this on to be somebody's cause. I know. It's my fault this whole thing got started. I take full responsibility for it. Oh, is that it? Is that what you do? You, you, you take the responsibility and walk away? 
Dave. I tried. You didn't try hard enough. What do you tell the kid? What do you say to Tommy? You say, sorry, Tommy, it didn't work out, but it's okay, it's my fault, and I'll take the responsibility? No. No. He's expecting me to be his father, and he's expecting to come and live with me. Oh, God, Dave. You didn't tell him. You heard. So what do I do now? You wait. I wait for what? The downtown office doesn't want to separate Tommy from his brother and sisters. They want us to find someone who will adopt him as a family. You told me yourself that the chances of that happening were almost impossible. You've been trying to do that for three years. How long do you keep trying? Well, they want us to continue trying. Well, the kids are going to be, they'll be here till they're 18 years old. That's 11 years for Tommy. I'm sorry, Mr. Benjamin. Yeah, I know you're sorry. Everybody's sorry. You know what I think, Mrs. Grady? I think your reason's a crock. What if I told you that I'd adopt all five kids? They'd turn you down? What if I was rich? What if I had a big house with a lot of bedrooms? Would they let me adopt them? I don't know. Mrs. Grady, please. Please, be honest with me. The downtown office feels that Tommy would be better off in a home with two parents. That's it. Yes, that's it. This is a special situation, Mrs. Braggs. I didn't go to that home to find a son. I, I didn't walk in a room and look through a window and say, OK, uh, that's him. I want that boy. Tommy and I have a relationship. It's been going on for months. He's got a special problem. I've been trying to help him with it. I'm aware of his problem, and I'm aware that you've been very helpful. But you've spent enough time in that home to realize that there are other considerations. Tommy has a brother and sisters. But those kids have been institutionalized for years. They've been in and out of foster homes, been split up, separated. When was the last time they were together under one roof? That's not the point. Well, I think that is the point. They may have the same last name, but they have no true sibling relationship. They never have had one. And if you maintain a policy that adoption can't split them up, they're just going to spend the rest of their childhood split up in foster homes. And if you're telling me that that's what's best for those children, then you and I don't live in the same country. I don't appreciate being spoken to in that manner. I'm sorry. It's just very important to me. If it is at all possible, I want Tommy to be adopted together with his brother and sister. When is it no longer possible? When does the day finally arrive when you say, OK, that's it, we're splitting up the family? Mrs. Braggs, if a husband and wife who qualified wanted to adopt Tommy alone today, would you approve it? So what you're saying is that you don't approve of my adopting him? That's part of it. Well, how big a part of it? Is it 10%? Is it 90%? The fact of the matter is that in 50% of the cases, we are successful in keeping siblings together. And we have a policy against single parent adoptions. Where was that policy four months ago when this whole thing started? I didn't know about you four months ago. This was a mistake from the start. Mrs. Marks has been reprimanded, and all I can do is apologize for the department. Well, I won't accept it. The boy and I want to be together. There may be two parents out there who can give Tommy a loving and happy home. Nobody can give him more love than I can give him. If only you could have seen him in Buchanan when we had a chance to be together every day for a week. I don't, what are you talking about? I'm talking about our vacation. We spent a week together at my parents' home in Michigan. You took that boy for a week? Out of state? Who gave you permission to do that? I want you to reduce Tommy's dependency on you. I want you to begin diluting your relationship. He's going to be visited by other prospective parents. And I want you to limit your visits to alternate weekends.
just heard. If there's anything, if there's anything I can do, I'm on your side. What is it? Boy, till you die. They're just teasing you. I'm not gonna die. They're just teasing you. I'm just fine, Tiger. Obviously, the word is out. I'll tell you, Manny. Those people are underestimating the hell out of me. Too bad, Art. Yeah. Excuse me, is, uh, is that Mr. Gwen, Arthur Gwen? Yep, it is. Thank you. Mr. Gwen? Yeah? My name is David Benjamin. I think Manuel Garcia called you about me. Oh, yeah, the adoption case? Right. Well, I really told him I wasn't interested. Well, I'd like to change your mind. From what he tells me, you just don't have a snowball's chance. That's the child welfare department you're tangling with. They tell me that you just lost a case. Yeah. It was the first time? No. You think it'll be the last? You know why Manny sent you to me? I hope it's because you're a good lawyer. My wife and I have two adopted children. I'm sure you thought I'd be a sucker for your story. Well, I hope he was right. Aside from being single and 23, is there anything else that could be keeping them from allowing this adoption? I'm Jewish? It's not strong enough. What about crimes? Your record, moral <laughs> charges? No. Are you gay? No. All right. I want your permission to have you investigated. I've got to know everything about you. I can't allow myself to get in a situation that has bad surprises. OK, go right ahead. Fine. You just keep a nice, low profile with child welfare. You have any money? How much am I going to need? Just enough to buy lunch. <laughs> Mr. Benjamin? He said his father was outside. Oh, that's me. I mean, it will be. You can wait outside now, Tommy. <sighs> Removing his adenoids hasn't solved his problem. He's got fluid in both middle ears, and it's just not draining. We're going to have to operate again. When? Well, as soon as there's a bed available. Could be a week, could be a month. See you this weekend, Tommy. I I gotta work. You know work Saturday? Yeah, I do. I I I, I have to work this Saturday. To. I'll tell you what, we'll just take a little walk around here, okay? Me want to a day! Come on, Tommy. No! Oh, Tommy! I 
think what you've done is brainwash that child. I don't know what kind of horror stories you fed him regarding weekends with other people. We've never discussed other people. I never told him that I wasn't going to adopt him. I even lied to cover up the reason that I couldn't see him this weekend. He's telling you the truth, Mrs. Gray. The Brenners are very upset. Oh, forget about the Brenners. The Brenners are two adults. What about Tommy? Doesn't he count for anything? Yes, he does. That's why I insist you no longer see the boy. You can't do that. Yes, I can. Mr. Benjamin is no longer welcome at this home. Mrs. Braggs, I run this home. I don't have any power over your adoption procedures, but child welfare doesn't tell me who can and can't work here. We are not discussing the hiring and firing of janitors and gardeners. We are discussing the influence of this person on a child in our custody. Child welfare is his legal guardian, and we are the final authority. You don't tell me how to run my home, because that's what it is. You are a visitor here. I know every one of these kids by their first name. I know how they put their socks on in the morning and when they're telling a lie and who smokes in the washroom. So don't come visiting and tell me what influences are working on my kids. I know them all. And Dave Benjamin is a good one. And as long as I'm in charge of this home, he's welcome here. I'll take this up with your superiors. Meanwhile, you are not allowed to take Tommy off this campus. Mrs. Braggs, could we please continue discussing this? Maybe we could go and have a cup of coffee someplace. I, I just don't think you realize what these trips off campus mean to Tommy. Mrs. Braggs, I don't understand you. Why are you doing this to me? I have been in the child welfare department for 23 years, and I have been responsible for finding good homes for thousands of needy children. There is a way to do things, Mr. Benjamin, and a way not to. And everything you do is the way not to. I don't trust you, and I don't like you. You got me? They think that you should have a, a father and a mother. And that's why they want you to go out with other people. I want to adopt you, Tom. I really do. And I'm going to fight him. See, whenever you do something like you did the other day, they get angry and they take it out on me. So you got to help. I want you to go with these people when they send you. They're not bad people. So you'll be nice to them. Please. Okay. Well, well, you don't have to be too nice to him, okay? Yeah, just fine. I'm taking the case. Great. Are they uh, increasing the pressure on you? They won't let me take him off campus anymore. Well, what I want to do is just sort of rattle them. Bureaucrats are terrified of going to court. I think the fact that you have a lawyer just might make them nervous enough to start talking. And if we can get a dialogue going, 
Then I think there's a chance that we can settle this in our case. Uh, I don't think so. Not with that woman involved. Do you remember when you asked me what could possibly keep them from allowing this adoption? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Braggs does not like me. I don't know why. I think it's personal. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I said. But I saw a moment in that woman's eyes. I swear she'd have killed me. She told you she felt that way? She said she did not like me. Any witnesses? No, we were alone. I just don't understand it. I've always felt that I've gotten along very well with people. I've never had this kind of experience before. Well, what we're dealing with here is a by-the-book bureaucrat. She's got that book, and it's her Bible. It's kept her safe and secure all these years, and you come along and start shaking it up. Well, you're scaring her, Dave. People that get scared get angry. Now, she has to report to someone else, and that's the person that we have to get to. Tell me who your friends are. People that uh, you think might write letters or testify in court in your behalf. Okay. Well, we have Manny, right? Right, good, okay, Manny Garcia. Okay. You know, sometimes I think somebody should adopt you. Does child welfare know about this Casey Jones complex you have? Look, look, look. Hi. Hi, Julie. Hi. Hi. It's been quite a while. Yeah. How's Tommy? He's fine. You know, he asks about you all the time. He does? Sure. Well, have you adopted him yet? Well, no, we're still kind of working on that. How about you? What's new with you? Oh, oh, I was accepted into law school. Great. <laughs> That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks. Well, <laughs> I guess I'll go. Say hi to Tommy, will you? It's good to see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. She's still crazy about you. Hey, she's a wonderful girl. Do you realize the problems you could save yourself in adopting Tommy if you just married her? Bobby, I wouldn't do that to her. Do what? She's in love with you. Right. I just wish I felt the same way about her. Listen, I gotta, I gotta ask you for another favor. Sure. I gotta borrow your car. What for? I need a change. You got it. Hey, Manny. Walk with me. All right. Well, wait a minute. I want to show you something. I got something for Tommy here. It's called a cyclo teacher. It's a teaching aid. That's why. What's going on? Is Tommy all right? He's fine. He's watching television. I want to see him. Dave, it's not just Braggs this time. It's the whole department. I got a call. They're furious. The fact that you hired a lawyer has him hysterical. I think you should stay away for the time being. Mrs. Ryan, open the door, please. Mrs. Ryan, will you please open the door? I want to see the door. If you've got any chance with this boy, you're going to blow up this way. Do you want, you want Tommy to see you this way? Think what you do to him. This is a, uh, Cyclo teacher. And, uh, it, just give it to him. Good day, Mr. Gwen. Well, Mr. Willis, this is my client, Dave Benjamin. This is my assistant, Mrs. Braggs. Please be seated. Well, I want to thank you very much for meeting with us like this today. 
thought it'd be much better if we could discuss this situation informally. I appreciate that. I've gone over all the material relevant to this case. I must say, Mr. Benjamin, you've done a commendable job in outlining your position. You're really quite a remarkable young man. And if this county allowed single-parent adoptions, I wouldn't hesitate to accept you as a responsible candidate. But it is the policy of this department not to allow single-parent adoptions. And that's what we must all live with. Nobody told me that six months ago. Now, that policy, I'm aware that it exists. But is it because it's legally mandated, or is it simply a tradition? Ballard County has never allowed a single-parent adoption. I understand that, Mrs. Braggs, but is it because your charter says so? Our policy is laid down by a board of directors. You seem to be more interested in your policy than in the welfare of this child. Now, Mr. Willis, I've checked very carefully through the laws of this state and this county, and you know, I just can't find a law that expressly forbids a single-parent adoption. Now, you must understand, Mr. Gwynn, our priority here is with the welfare of the child. It is the feeling of this department, a feeling that is shared by the vast majority of the people of this state, and I'm sure of this country, that a child should have the opportunity to have two parents. I agree, but I think the key word is opportunity. And what Mr. Benjamin and I are concerned about is when the concept of opportunity has outlived its usefulness and starts to get in the way of the child's welfare. Mr. Benjamin has proven himself to be a mature, capable, hardworking, loving person. And as far as I can see, the only thing that bothers you people is the fact that he's not married. Well, that fact is not legal basis for disqualifying him as a prospective parent. So I think what we're dealing with here is a matter of traditional preferences on the part of your department. What I propose is that we eliminate the subjective aspects of this case. Mr. Benjamin's love for the child and your emotional attachment to your policy and concern ourselves with what Tommy feels. The boy is not old enough to take responsibility. I understand that. I'm not suggesting that he is. I'd like an expert in the field of child psychology to examine both Tommy and Mr. Benjamin so that he can make an objective appraisal and a recommendation for the best interest of the boy. Well, what you're asking us to do, Mr. Gwen, is give up our responsibility as guardians of this child and hand him over to someone else. I think that allowing a trained specialist to assess the situation would be very responsible on your part. And I know we can agree on the man. Mr. Gwen, the only reason I consented to this meeting was so I could personally explain the reasons why Mr. Benjamin will not be allowed to adopt this boy. Now, you're setting out suggestions to continue the adoption procedure. And we're not prepared to do that. Are you prepared to go to court? Well, you have my phone number, if you'd just like to think it over for a few days. Dave? Good day. What do you think? Well, if they weren't afraid of us, I don't think they would have had this meeting in the first place. I think they're going for it, Dave. You know, you were, you were really very impressive. Yes, I was, wasn't I? Hi, kiddo. Me miss you. Me too. When we go home, you? I don't know, but don't give up. Listen, you're going to meet a very special man. He's a doctor. No ear. No, 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 no. He's not an ear doctor. He's just going to ask you a lot of questions. But then he's going to decide if we belong together. Me belong you. I know. Look.
Go, go. That's right. That's great. That's great. Have you met the doctor yet? No, no, I haven't met him yet. You know, I'm really pleased you're fighting this thing. I know it's been difficult, but I'm so glad for Tommy's sake that, that you aren't giving up. Hey! We want you for Dada. You told him no, right? No. <laughs> Me say yes. Where's your cap? Mrs. Reinhardt. She keeping it for me. Good. That's very good. You said that very well. Mr. Benjamin? Okay. Me go you. No, you're going with Mrs. Marks. I'm going to talk to the doctor. Me go you. No, no, no Tommy, no, no, no. it's not going to look good in front of the doctor if you break my arm. Okay? Good luck. He be my dada. It would be as if someone uh, took you into deep water. And they said, don't be afraid. I'm, I'm not going to let anything happen to you. And then they swam away. I don't want to do that to Tommy. Anyone done that to you? Did someone you love abandon you when you were a child? No, 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 no. I, I come from a family that keeps its commitments. This is a commitment that may be too big to keep. You very well may be forced to swim away. I don't want to sound too pessimistic, Mr. Benjamin, but I deal in realities. That's all for today. I'd like to see you and Tommy separately and together over the next few weeks. Mr. Benjamin, I know you feel rather disappointed in them, but both Mrs. Marks and Mrs. Grady have strongly recommended to me that you and Tommy should be together. I don't know why they call poker a game. I never had to work so hard in my life and pay for the privilege. <laughs> How much did you lose? 65 bucks. Oh, no. How'd you do? I broke even. I hate cigarettes. I think I'm just going to leave this garbage till tomorrow. Look, I am going to sack out here on the couch because I'm not going all the way home to my place. You know what? You better wake up because you're going home. Just throw a blanket on me. I'm serious, Bobby. All I need is for you to spend the night here and have somebody report it to child welfare. What, do you think they'll accuse you of being gay? We don't know these people. That's the first thing my lawyer asked me about. Well, then let's order in a couple of chicks. I'm not sure that'd be any better. Are you serious? I just don't want to take a chance of blowing this adoption. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. Do you think somebody's out there watching your pants? Maybe. You know, this adoption thing is making you paranoid, old buddy. Maybe. No, if you wanted to, you could stay here and help me clean up. No, I think I'll just go no, home. I'll just go home. You're doing such a great job. I'm so domestic. I'll see you later. You got it, buddy. Drive safe. Oh, tomorrow. Oh, yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh. <coughs> to the door. I'm sorry. I just wanted to see him. I know. Every night after the child welfare workers go home. Are you going to report me? If they're going to fire me, that's too bad. What they're doing is wrong, and I don't want any part. 
Why don't you go on? You've got a lot of things to do. I'll stay here. Lord, I hope this is the last operation. Oh, boy. Enough is enough. I know. I'll call me later. All right. Excuse me, could I use your telephone, please? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what do I dial to get out? Oh, just dial nine. Nine? Okay. Hello? Uh, hello, Mr. Gwen, this is David Benjamin. Dave, are you still at the hospital? Yes, well, he's, he's still in the recovery room, but the surgery went very well. You feel good? Yes. How would you like to feel better? I just got a copy of Dr. Holder's report. Uh, it's sort of long, so I'm just going to read you the last paragraph. After evaluating Tommy's personality, his present and past situation, his IQ test, and Mr. Benjamin's special qualifications and motivation to help Tommy, it is my judgment that this adoption should be activated and consummated. Uh, 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 is that it? I mean, does that, uh, does that mean that I could adopt him? Well, I think it has to. I don't see how child welfare can back off of this situation. Now, I've set up a meeting on Thursday for us uh, with Willis. Is that all right with you? Yeah, it's fine. Are you all right? Oh, oh yeah, I'm terrific. <laughs> right, right. with other people related to this case. This has not been an easy decision. My staff has spent many hours struggling with it, and we have decided that, despite Dr. Holder's recommendation, the ramifications of this kind of adoption would be disastrous on the child welfare program in this county. Our decision is there will be no adoption. I thought we agreed to abide by Dr. Holder's recommendation. We only agreed to have Dr. Holder investigate and make his report. He's done that. We have every right to overrule it. And we have every right to take you to court. If you choose to test our adoption procedure in a court of law, that's your privilege. But this will be our last discussion with you concerning this adoption. What the hell's the matter with you people? Dave, just take it easy. What the hell do you people think you're talking about? You're talking about procedures, cases, ramifications. We're not talking about points of law. We're talking about a boy who loves me and who I love. What the hell do you know about that? Where were you three days ago when he was in a hospital coming out of surgery, crying because his ears hurt? 
There wasn't one damn person there from well child welfare to comfort him, and there never has been. You people are strictly nine to five. You know that. Hey, that boy doesn't disappear 16 hours a day. He's alive, and he's alive on the weekends when you people are home barbecuing your hot dogs and mowing your lawns. Well, what about his weekend, huh? Doesn't he doesn't he get a home and a lawn to mow and somebody who can who can show him some affection and some love and some consideration? I can give him that. I want to give him that. What the hell is so wrong about that? I'd like a few minutes alone with Mr. Benjamin, please. We have another appointment. A few minutes. I think you owe him that much. How do you beat these people? First, there's Bragg. And then you move up and there's Willis. And now they got a whole board of directors. I tell you, I feel like just going back to that home and stealing him. Stop it, Dave. You've got to start thinking about your next move. We go to court. Isn't that what we set out to do? That's what we threatened to do. I was hoping that'd be enough to scare them. So what are you saying now, that we don't go to court? Let me give you some hard facts. I mean, even with Holder's recommendation, it's going to be tough to fight. They'll go out and find another psychiatrist that'll take the opposite point of view. Now, I think I can prove their adoption procedures are unconstitutional. But that kind of legal nitpicking can go on for years. Oh, fine. Fine, I'll just steal him. Stop it. Well, what's left? They won't let me on the campus. They won't let me work with him. What happens to Tommy and me while all this is going on? When do I see him again? When he's 12 years old, when he's 15 years old? Come on, Art. Who do I talk to? Who's the person who finally says, forget the rules, forget the bureaucracy. I am responsible. That person doesn't exist. That person's got to exist. <laughs> I'm not going to waste any more of your time, Mr. Willis. I've decided to take you to court. I'm sorry to hear that, but we're prepared. No, I don't think you are prepared. I'm not taking you to court to contest the adoption procedures of your department. And I'm not even going to take the child welfare department to court. I'm taking you to court, both you and Mrs. Bragg. Now, you didn't know that Tommy had a hearing problem. You didn't know he had his tonsils out. You didn't know he had ear surgery. You didn't even know that I took him to Michigan. You're Tommy's legal guardians, appointed and paid for by the state. And in my opinion, you've been neglecting your responsibilities to the point of jeopardizing his health. Now, that's not the state. And that's not adoption procedures, and it certainly isn't child welfare. I think that's you, personally. I'm not going to let you hide in your system. And I don't think that your system is prepared to hide you. So I'm taking you to court, and I'm suing you both for neglect and child abuse. Are you mad? Ah, uh, he can't do that. Like hell, he can. Hey, kiddo. Hi. What you do here? I came to see you. Mrs. Ryan told me you were here. How do you feel? Do your ears still hurt? No. Stay good. Listen. What's that noise? What? what? You mean the frog? Frog make noise? You mean you never heard a frog before? 
I hear him now. I feel good now? Sure do. Hey! What do you think you're doing? It's okay. Mike, hell, it's okay. Who do you think you are? Well, it's okay. I'm his father. My father? That's me.